Deserts are one of my favorite landscapes. It's not just sand, it's open space and um, a lot of room to think. It matters where we die. I don't want to end my life here, have these be my last days, cold and uh, braced against the wind. I want to die somewhere warm where I can still kick up my feet, have a last little swim and lay down and say bye-bye. I was born in Cairo um, in December because uh, my mother fell running for a bus and so I came uh, three months prematurely. One time I was sitting under the table and it was, um, it was uh, one of the nights of uh, Ummu Kulthum, one of Egypt's most famous singers, one of her Thursday night concerts and I was, you know, wanting them not to know that I was still awake, I was eavesdropping. And I remember my uncle said to my mom, um, you know Ummu Kulthum prefers girls. And I thought, wow. She prefers girls, fantastic. Boy, there's not a lot of people around in the world who prefer girls. Um, I think I like her. I didn't realize that he meant she preferred girls like she was a lesbian. I lived in Cairo until I was about eight and a half and then we came to Canada. And that was very sad. I really didn't want to leave Egypt. It was heart-wrenching to leave Cairo because it meant leaving the one person that I that was like a mother to me, my grandmother. In those days, the distance between here and there seemed so much further than it is now um, that I felt that I would never find my way back. Displacement becomes home. Your sense of dislocation is your location. Um, because people often ask me, do you feel that you're Egyptian or do you feel that you're Canadian? I am both, but I'm, I'm, never, I'm never Egyptian in Egypt and I'm never Canadian in Canada. My mother was uh, living, well, lived with us until I was three and then she, re she remarried. And um, I only lived with her once we moved to Canada. I was thrown in with a bunch of strangers and um, I felt very much an outsider in that family. My stepdad uh, really didn't like girls reading. We didn't have books at home. One of the first books I took out of the library was uh, Somerset Moms of Human Bondage. And uh, I got the book and I would read it at night and um, my, uh, my dad found the book and he threw the book into the incinerator. He felt that books could put ideas in your mind. He was absolutely right that he should have kept books out of our hands because in our hands, they bear strange fruit. <laughs> I ran away from home when I was 16 and um, the only thing I took with me, uh, well, besides underwear and socks, were three books, um, a Russian grammar book, uh, a political science book and a book on abnormal psychology and they were the only three books I owned and um, you know they were precious to me. What did I do between the time I was 16 till the time I was 32? Yeah, um, I can barely remember. It's crazy. I joined a Christian commune. I did street theater on Vancouver's east side. I lived with a group of hippies and we made earrings. I ran a theater, a bilingual theater in Montreal. I lived in uh, Florence for eight months. I worked in a gold manufacturing outlet in Montreal. I waitressed a great deal. I moved to Toronto when I was 27, the day that Lady Di got married. And now I'm here to stay. I always wanted to be a mother. But I, by the time I was 30, I felt that I wouldn't end up ever being a mother, although I was quite prepared to have a child uh, on my own. I was 34 years old when Alex was born. By then, his dad and I had been together for about five years. 
it was a very volatile relationship. And we split up when Alex was about three. It was very, very difficult for a very long time, particularly because we both wanted to live close to one another for Alex's sake, so he would feel that he could go back and forth easily. But it took very many years for us to learn to like each other again. And I'm really grateful for it because it was really difficult before then. Had I lived in Egypt, life would have been very different. I would have probably been married with at least a few children. And uh, God knows what would have become of me. I would have liked, I would have liked to have more children. When I met Miriam and her mom, I felt that I finally had a family. Oh, it was amazing. Uh, they're wonderful, but also they're Egyptian. And they're not quite as conservative as my own family was. And the family is huge. And I feel that finally I have the kind of family I want. I was very worried that I would end up um, 50, waitressing at friends in Little White Shoes. When I started at York, I was 32, I believe. I love York University. Coming here really changed my life, um, really unexpectedly. I didn't expect to love it quite as much. I thought I was just coming here to do a BA, something I've always wanted to do. And suddenly I found myself in the midst of books and ideas. And I found a place where I felt that I really belonged. And all those ideas helped me to feel a lot more grounded than I had before I came. I remember going to a movie once with a bunch of intellectuals um, <clears throat> before I considered myself remotely well-read and people came out of this movie and it was called Nostalgia and people were talking about how much what it meant and what it signified and philosophically etc and I thought oh these people are so boring they're so boring there can't be anything real about what they're saying and then later, as I read, as I kept reading more theoretical works, I realized there's a lot of layers that we actually can't see that are invisible to us unless we have a connection to the world of ideas. Otherwise, we see things, but we see them in a way a little to only have one meaning rather than layers of meaning. As students, love me or hate me. I know I have these very extreme responses to my teaching. Partly, I think, is because some people, the, what I'm transmitting to them, some people embrace it and think, oh, fantastic, I've arrived. Finally, I'm learning something I can relate to. And other people don't even want to begin to think about those ideas because it challenges something deep inside of them.